This is Carl at National RV Detroit. I'm going to walk you through this 2021 Flagstaff Microlite model 21DS. Okay, so let's let's go around the outside first here. Now this is not a floor plan video. This is not a sales video. It's just a basic how-to video. Um, nothing more. So, okay. So you have um, scissor type stabilizers, four of them. You get a crank with it, or you can use a three-quarter inch socket on a drill. Okay, these are your low point drains under there. I don't have to show them, but they're under there. That's for winterizing. Now, keep in mind, there's a LP quick connect right here. If you can see that. Um, when you hang your grill or griddle outside here, you have to use the LP hose to connect it to the system. So it comes with the, uh, the, the mount, the griddle, and a uh, LP hose to hook it up, okay? Now this is the vent for your range hood right here. If you see, there's a tab on each side. So if, you're gonna, if you get a vent uh, using your fan, you can, you can just push up on those tabs so the baffle inside there flaps freely. Um, that's important obviously when you're venting to the outside but if you're if you're just in storage or, tra or in transit that sort of thing make sure you push it shut so it doesn't flap around and get broken or anything like that okay uh, you've got outside speakers of course you've got a power awning with LED strip you have a video out power and a um, mount to hang a TV outside your steps uh, you can adjust the legs independently of each other so you just push this this lever right here if you can see that um, you just push it up and you can slide them up and down one one increment at a time okay all right so this is your hitch it's a husky center line weight distribution hitch with built-in sway control so we'll show you how that operates when you when you come to pick up your trailer also, this is your LP line that I told you about for hooking up the griddle. Okay, um, that's just a spatula that comes with it. Now, this right here is a is a hookup for a solar panel. If you wanted to get a solar panel that's a battery charger, um, that's where you would plug it in right there, and it'll just charge the batteries if you if you need an emer to charge them in an emergency or or whatever. Okay, now. Your power tongue jack can be cranked manually. You can pull this plug off the top, and there should be a small crank in here. Let me look and see if I can find it. Yes. So this small crank right here, that will uh, crank your, your power tongue jack manually if you need to. All right. can get you out of trouble. This bag your cord goes in, of course. Now this, this crank here, you can see it's got a, it's got a, it's like a cylinder with a with a slot cut across it. Um, let's walk back over here. That is to crank your off door slide slide out out manually. If you get into trouble, you can crank it in and out manually. It takes about a thousand cranks, but it'll it'll get it, it'll do the job. So when you look through here, through this hole, you can't really see it. But if you, if you look all the way to the frame, you'll see a shaft with a pin through it. So you'd put that crank on the shaft with the pin through it and crank it. Like I said, you can get, get that, that slide out in and out during emergencies. Okay, so this comes with two LP tanks, two 30-pound tanks with automatic changeover regulator. You have um, two deep cycle marine batteries. They're wired together at um, 12 volts, so it's just basically still puts out 12 volts it just doubles your storage capacity okay um, this does have an inverter on it just let me see what this one is while I'm looking it looks like a panel okay well I'll know when we get inside also keep in mind it's hard to see it here let me see if I can pull this up here so you can see right there behind the tank that's the kill switch for your battery so, um, if you want to disconnect the batteries uh, from the uh, from the coach itself, you can just turn that off. 
but you only do that in storage because uh, other times uh, your, your tow vehicle is going to be charging it when you're pulling it down the road your power converter will charge it uh, uh, when you're plugged in so the only time you're going to shut that off is when you you don't want it to drain down this right here this is the the other half of your TV bracket on the outside right so you can um, you can uh, put that on the back of a TV like I said to hang it outside all right so this is your this is your your the most common way to get water to the trailer is your city water hookup this is for your fresh water tank here let's say you're going to a campground that does not have plumbing on the campsite uh, you can pre-fill your tank here and use the onboard pump to pump the water uh, all right and to dump your tank is right here so there's a a white gate valve I think you can see it there it's hard for me to see the monitor but that's a white gate valve you just pull out on that and it'll it'll dump your fresh water tank more storage let me just make sure I'm not missing anything here okay this is your power cord it's a 30 amp 30 foot cord and we give you a, an adapter too to adapt it down to a regular household style uh, plug um, just to, you know when you're packing up getting ready to go you can turn on the lights and stuff that's your dump hose right there okay these are your dump valves so you got a gray valve which is gray is for the gray tank which is sink and shower water black tank valve is a black tank is for toilet water and waste so you always dump the black one first then you dump the gray one to kind of wash it out a little bit and after you do that you can come up here to your tank flush right here so you hook the hose at the dump station on right there, turn it on, and like it says on this sticker, make sure the black tank valve is open. And then you turn on the water and it'll spray out the inside of your black tank, clean off the sensors, that, that sort of thing. Just clean it out in general, so it's a really good thing to do. Um, this is your city water hookup right here. I showed you where you, you fill the fresh water tank up, up, up uh, on the off-door side towards the front there. Um, this is where you hook up city water, the most common way to get water to the trailer. And this has to do with winterizing. So when you winterize in the, uh, before it freezes in the winter or late fall, um, you could actually draw antifreeze through this port. Okay. So you have a ladder, which is a great thing because manufacturer uh, states that you should um, inspect the roof every 90 days. So you want to go up there, have somebody go up there, be very careful of course. Look at all the sealant and the caulk. Make sure there's no cracking or separation. Any place water could get in. Make sure there's no damage done to the roof or the roof attachments uh, by low branches, that sort of thing. Just give it a good inspection. If you see an issue, take care of it immediately. All right. So this is your water heater. Now this is both a black gas and electric. The switch is inside for, but I will show you. There's a second switch right here, or, or a. An outside switch I guess you could say if you look at it right there it's a rocker switch on and off that controls the electric heating element that's behind this cover here so you have to turn that on in order to get uh, electricity to the heating element now keep in mind that you always want to make sure you have water in the tank before you turn that on because it can burn out really quickly this is your drain plug here it has an anode rod on it but it's a it's an inch and a sixteenth six point socket and you'll also need like a six inch extension to, to uh, so you can spin your ratchet okay this is just an outside shower this housing tells us this is pre-wired for a backup camera so you can always add on a backup camera we do sell them here if you're interested um, it, when you turn on your running lights basically it activates the camera so you can see behind you when you're backing up you can also see behind you when you're driving if you want okay so let's go inside I gotta pick up the pace here. I've only got 30 minutes before this starts a new file. So, okay. Okay. So, we'll start right here at the control. This is your obviously your grill, griddle um, that hangs. I told you about the 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 LP uh, hose and uh, hanging it on the outside at the rail and that sort of thing. Okay. Um, you're not going to store it here obviously this is just they just have it set up this way so when you come to look at it you can see it um, so this device here is the power converter now this has two this has an inverter and a converter the converter converts 
D, or AC to DC power. So it goes from 120 AC to 12 volt DC. The inverter does the opposite. It goes from 12 volt DC to 110, 120 AC. Um, okay, I'll go over both of them. This is the this is the converter. So you start off with AC power here, 100, 110, 120 volts. Um, these are circuit breakers like you'd see at home. They're all labeled. Then the power is converted to 12 volt DC on this side. You've got automotive style fuses and they're all labeled. If these fuses were to blow, they'll actually light up and you can see it. Um, keep in mind these 40s are the masters. So if you ever have a wild power surge or something uh, at the campground and your, your 12 volt side goes out, always look here because that's where the problem is going to be because that, that, that the job of these two redundant fuses are to protect the 12 volt side. Okay. Also, this is a battery tender, so when you're plugged in, it'll sense how much energy your batteries need, and if they're low, it'll send 10 amps or whatever it needs to them. If they're, if they're charged, it'll just trickle a couple to maintain them, so it's smart in that sense. All right, so this is your, your uh, sound here. You can, it plays CDs and DVDs, of course. You have Bluetooth, so you can stream with your phone or tablet. You have a, a USB port. Um, this HDMI is an in. So if you wanted to go into the system with like a, uh, just say a video game or something to keep kids busy on a rainy weekend, you could go straight into the system that way with it. Also, it has uh, three speaker zones. Um, actually, one and two is just, is here. I don't know why they, I think this is standard one, it has three standard zones, so just one and two are going to be in this, this room right here, and uh, three will be the outside. Now, keep in mind, the when you read your manual, you can set a um, you can set zone three, which is outside. You can set the source and the volume independently of inside. So you could be watching a video inside here, for example, and you would hit the zone three button, program the radio station in, in and the volume, and it, you can play uh, a video in here and the radio outside, that sort of thing. So that's a very good feature. <coughs> the control panel. I'll start with a Wi-Fi Ranger. The Wi-Fi Ranger is a signal booster uh, for your uh, public Wi-Fi. So, if you look at here, it says network, and then you get to say Tenton 4077. Well, when you when you go on your phone or tablet and you go to to Wi-Fi, you look for this right here, and you'll know that that's your Wi-Fi Ranger. Okay. Now, to see what the Wi-Fi Ranger sees, you can um, type in this address here in a browser and it'll take it to the page for this and then you put in the temporary password change me now 4077 and you'll be able to see everything the Wi-Fi Ranger see so the idea is there's a there's an antenna on the roof It's a really good signal booster so I gotta get up here for a second hold on oh my goodness so um uh, what, what it does basically is boost up the public Wi-Fi signal you can just get a better stronger signal um, so what you do is you, in your, your family's devices, your tablets and uh, phones, you, you put in the password for your Wi-Fi Ranger. Then when you get to the campground, you, you go to this address in a browser and you pick out the public Wi-Fi and connect to that. So you don't have to connect everything to the public Wi-Fi, just the Wi-Fi Ranger. So it's a, really, uh, it's a really good system. Also, keep in mind there's a second function that where you can get cellular service through it you'd have to have a sim card and pay a separate fee to whoever you get your your um, your your phone from and that sort of thing but most people just use the free Wi-Fi version if you work some people when they work out of their trailer they'll have the cellular function but the free Wi-Fi is generally the way to go okay um, so these are lights this is your uh, your slide out in and out your awning to retract extend never leave the awning out unattended if you're not going to be at the campsite roll it in okay your water pump I told you about is right there you use this for pumping water out of your fresh water tank if you don't have city water and you also use that for winterizing the trailer um, your water heater on gas water heater on electric remember I told you there's a second switch in the lower left hand corner on the outside for the electric and then you have tank heaters on this one so it has uh, heating pads on all the tanks in the elbows so uh, it, it basically you can stay out longer in the winter and go out earlier in the late winter early spring so it just extends your camping season uh, also you can see your levels here so your battery is we're just running on battery right now so it's a little low um, but we're not plugged in 
fresh water you still have a third in there so you can try it when you pick up the trailer your black water uh, tank is empty your gray water tank is empty it graduates up in one third increments as it goes once you get past two thirds you gotta start thinking about dumping your your gray and black tanks alright <clears throat> while I'm standing here this is your, a tire monitor here this will tell you the temperature of your wheels and the pressure in your tires. It has alarm on it, that sort of thing. We'll go over that uh, with you also. Okay, so you have here, I told you about that, this is the power converter, right? This is the power inverter here. It's on right now, but there's no reason for it to be on. So we're going to shut it off. You only turn it on when you're going to be inverting power. So this takes the power from your battery and turns it into AC current. Um, there'll only be one uh, plug it's usually labeled I don't see it oh yeah right here inverted circuit so this is this plug right here is inverted so if you needed to plug something into that you know like a, a hair dryer or anything like that that's where you would plug it in and you would turn on the inverter that's only if you don't have AC power right if you're not can't you're not a campground with AC power um, like I said if you're when you're inverting you're taking those st battery at the storage 12 volts out of your battery and turn it into AC power um, all right, hopefully that made sense to you. Um, let me see here. Okay, well, you have, as you know, you have a hide a bed, so you'll jackknife this flat, and then the bed folds over, and it's a great thing because it, it basically, um, you know, you reclaim the floor space during the day, so it seems like a much bigger trailer. If you wanted all this living area plus the, a full size bed, it would have to be eight feet longer right so it's a really really neat solution to that problem all right so you can turn this into a bed too your dinette you just collapse this table by putting it pushing this lever to the right and then there's hinges there you just collapse it down and you set it on these cleats here use the back cushions to fill it in so you get another bed your uh, microwave works like any other microwave keep in mind what I told you about the range hood vent you have to open the baffle on the outside to vent and this is your, for your solar panel here. Okay, so right now he does he's, it's, he, he has gel battery, which is not the case. It's, it's actually a flooded battery, so let me change that. Well, of course I'm not doing it correctly, so I'll, I'll make sure it's set properly when you, before you pick it up. I'll just go through the features right now. So, okay, so there's not... Of not battery A and battery B. The reason being they're wired together as one battery, your two batteries, so it, this just considers B as the battery. Okay, so you have, um, start with the, you've got, um, let me get around here. There you go. 12.6 volts in the battery, right? Your solar panel is getting 1.4 amps right now from the sun and putting it in your battery for storage. Um, you're 80% charged because I told you we're running off the battery and you have uh, these are your amp hours here so the main thing to remember is that uh, uh, you look at the voltage here and then you want if you want to know what you're getting from the Sun it's coming up again right here you're getting 1.3 amps it'll show you the Sun with an arrow point towards the solar panel so okay and also you can charge a phone in an emergency right there using the solar panel but there's not, it doesn't show, you don't look for two different batteries, it's just one battery. Okay, so, I'm gonna pick up the pace here. Okay, this device here is your shower miser, right? What it does is, you know, it's a water saver, water and space saver, because uh, if they're in an area with drought, you can't, just can't be wasting water. So this is a, a, a um, circulating, um, system basically it just sends the water around in a loop till it heats till the tank heats it up um, therefore you don't just send water good perfectly good water down the drain while it's waiting to heat up right you just spin it around in a circle so to speak through the plumbing so um, also you you know if you're if you're just letting water flow while it heats up it's going down the drain into the gray tank so you're wasting space in your gray tank also so this saves you gray tank space and saves water. So all you do is you go into your cycle recirculating mode and you, 
and you watch this right here as it heats up it'll change colors you'll see it get a vivid this one I think is a more vivid blue some of them are a little different with that as I remember that's when that what that one does so when this changes color you know that the water's heated up so visually and then you go to normal position and you got hot water the only difference is like I said the water was circulated around through a loop in the plumbing instead of just sent down the drain okay long way to say that hopefully uh, uh, it made sense all right now you have a four-speed fan always run the fan with the shower to pull the um, um, humidity out of the trailer these are built super tight also if you got a lot of people over on one of those nights where you have um, you know uh, there, it's a it's a cool night and you're starting to get uh, a condensation for people's breath and that sort of thing you can turn this on and it'll pull all the moisture out of the trailer um, so keep that in mind also this is a GFCI all the plugs are wired to a GFCI so even the one on the outside if you're using the one on the outside it pops you would reset it in here okay the toilet is an RV toilet so you can't use a dry by dry I'm talking about the black tank which is directly below right so when you get to the when you get to the campground you hook up your power and your water then you'll come in here with a, a dose of your chemical right so you'll you'll put the chemical right in the bowl step on the flush pedal right down there water will come swirling out wash the uh, the uh, chemical into the into the black tank and you stand on it long enough to put about a gallon of water in there you can use more if you want but um, the main thing is you have to have water and chemical in the black tank before you start using it otherwise the smell will be uh, will be overwhelming so um, keep that in mind that's important We're going to be all going over a lot of this for you too, in case uh, you need to ask more questions. This this is just a a uh, 12 volt DC refrigerator. It's um uh it'll, it basically it runs off the battery or the converter. So when you're plugged in, your power converter down here will be converting the AC to 12 to to 12 volt DC. That's what this runs off of. When you're pulling down the road. Your, your, it'll be running off the batteries and your tow vehicle's alternator will be charged the battery so you can run it down the road that way. Always secure it with this latch here so they don't dent the doors up. Okay. Alright, so this just sparks to light. There's nothing unique about it. I don't know if he's got the gas turned on. We'll find out in a second. This is the sparker. You, you, you turn that clockwise. So what we do is we'll go to high Yep, so it's, it is turned on, so, and you light it, it's that simple. Three burners, three knobs, then you have the oven knob. The main difference is there's a, back here there's a pilot light uh, at the bottom all the way to the back. I actually spark it there so you can see it generally where it's at. So what you do is you go to the oven knob, go over to, to light it on pilot, and depress it. You keep it depressed during the whole procedure. You start sparking until this lights down here. And once it lights, you hold it in for another 10 seconds or so to heat it up. Go to operating temperature. It cycles as an oven does. But when you um, when you shut it off, the flame goes out, of course, but so does the pilot light. So you have to relight the pilot light each time you use the oven. All right. This is your thermostat. It's very simple. It's analog. All the way to the right is heat. The fan is just the air conditioner running without the compressor. And then cool is the full air conditioning. Always try to keep the fan on auto. That's the best way to run it. Okay. Alrighty. So let me look around and see if I forgot anything. I think we've pretty much got it all. I think so. Oh, there's one more thing. It would be your um, LP uh, and carbon monoxide alarm. All they have to do is find it. Okay, let me look here. Not there. Not there. Well, look a little farther here. <laughs> Every now and then I do this, I can't find the darn thing. It's normally very visible. It's uh, right out in the open. Very strange. Well, we'll have to come back when you pick it up. Uh, when you pick it up, and I'll, I'll I'll be able to tell you where it's at. It's kind of odd that I can't see it just by 
you know, if I look at it, oh, here it is, I'm sorry, holy cow, all right, you probably spotted it before, so this, this is your carbon monoxide LP gas detector, it should always be green like it is, if it goes off, you take everybody outside, leave the door open, shut the gas off, figure out what's going on, also if this beeps very slowly, it's telling you your battery's low, so I'm going to set it through the paces here, LP test, it was good, carbon monoxide coming up, and your low battery alarm coming up. And then back to green. It should always be green. If it's not, get it serviced, okay? That's very important. All right, so I want to thank you for purchasing your trailer here at National RV Detroit. Please remember what I told you about inspecting the roof. That is the most important job as a trailer owner. Every trailer ever made needs to be inspected. Um, any place you see sealant from the factory, you're going to uh, keep an eye on. And when you do see an issue of cracking or separation, you're going to take care of it immediately. Never use caulk from the hardware store. Always get the correct stuff at an RV place, okay? Thank you very much.